afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me back there? It works? Brilliant. So uh, welcome, to this, uh, welcome to this session. This might be the most exciting session in the afternoon because we are going to talk about how to use data from cities. Uh, my name is Carl Piva. I'm uh, going to be moderating uh, this session. Uh, so the first thing I would like to do is to invite everybody in who will be providing presentations to us all up on stage. And uh, uh, please have a seat. So you're welcome. Um, so we have, uh, to start with here, we have uh, uh, Wolfgang from Bosch. You will talk about what Bosch is doing in this space with some good examples as well. Uh, we have uh, uh, Delphine, uh, head of smart territories from Orange. Uh, it must be, must be good to be head of a territory. Uh, it's, it, it's a slight uh, despotic name there, but it's fun. <laughs> yep. We have uh, Michael, uh, but before Michael, we have Denise uh, from uh, Dijon. And uh, Michael, you're also going to have, I think your story will tag along a little bit uh, on that storyline. So it's going to be exciting to see what happens. Uh, we move then on to uh, uh, Carmen, who is the CEO of um, uh, Citellium. Citellium. And uh, we're going to hear what you're doing in this open data space as well. And we're going to close with Wolfgang uh, from uh, uh, the city of Munich. So it's going to be an exciting, I think, uh, uh, session for us all. I just wanted to get started by saying one short thing about the state of where we are, what I believe is where we are at with open data in cities today. Uh, so please take a seat. Um, so we have been doing uh, studies all, all around the world, uh, looking at the current state of affairs, uh, where cities are and, and where they want to go. And we found that most cities have, are really good at publicizing data. So you'll find data sets from in pretty much any city uh, today. What cities are not good at doing today is using this data for something that's meaningful. So turning this data into something useful for in terms of city services and so on is something that we haven't really done yet in cities. We think that part of the reason why this is the case is we haven't learned enough from the platform business models of uh, successful private entities such as Uber and Alibaba and others who actually figured out how to create ecosystems. So how do we insist in cities create curated ecosystems that deliver the resident services we wish for, but also give every participant in those ecosystems an opportunity to be successful? So how do we do that? That is taking the step from what we have today, which are basically publication, uh, publication mechanisms for data to ecosystems where data is being used in, in many different ways. So hopefully we can touch on that in these presentations and also in the discussion we're going to have afterwards. You have, all of you, I hope, have the Smart City Expo app in, on your phones. So if you want to ask any questions of, uh, of, our, of our panel, please uh, uh, do so through the app. And hopefully somebody will give us uh, an iPad with the questions as we go forward today. So having that said, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce the first speaker, uh, Wolfgang from Bosch. So thank you very much for the introduction and inviting me uh, to show the Bosch perspective on the topic of this session, leveraging the power of open data to improve city services. And so as you might know, Bosch is a technology-driven company. Uh, we are also dealing with mech trends like the connectivity. We have a lot of electronic products uh, which we connect to the internet and we call this IoT, Internet of Things. And uh, for this we have a open data platform and I just described with this slide the main idea which is behind. So we start with the connected things, even connected people um, and all this data being created from then is being collected on the software platform which we call the Bosch IoT Suite and it's even cross-segmental. There are, for example, data from electrical, uh, from charging stations, from household seating system, the industry 4.0, production, machi production machine, for example. And then you collect this data, bring this together, uh, analyze it, monitor it, and get to new application and services for mobility, for homes, for the industry, for example. That's the main idea. We even do this then in the context of city for smart cities. And so this um, is the basis we put uh, into this architecture, which is a very um, basic one. As we start with the infrastructure, there's a basic level where we have our own Bosch cloud. Um, then we have this Bosch IoT suite, 
uh, with different functionalities like uh, the permissions, the things integration, rules management, analytics, and so on. And then going to the right, this is an open platform which can be connected to other systems as well because there will be already in cities existing systems uh, where you have then um, a, a data flow on the one hand from the existing systems into maybe a new city platform and vice versa also in the other direction and then you're coming to new solutions for mobility industry building and so on this is now more detailed um, description how this works but it's not about technology it's much more about how can we the user the citizens benefit from this and so if we start into the discussion with the city with the mayor with the city administration then the, it has to be we start with a citizen focus with a user focus what is their needs what are their concerns on privacy security for example um, and this is the starting point to walk along with the city administration to come finally to this um, mentioned data platform and the benefits and even the business model, which is one of those three pillars, as you see, what is viable. Finally, you need the business model to finance an operation, to finance the data analytics behind this. And this is also a very important question, which has to be answered through this process. And even then the question, which technologies, which things, which data you need uh, to bring this benefit finally to the citizens and the city administration. So we have done this, uh, for example, with the city of Ludwigsburg, so we got um, uh, the, the question from the mayor. So we, we met him very ma various times. We met the, the city administration. So there was the basic idea to have a living lab because the city was very much interested in um, to understand the, 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 the technology goals of a technology driven company and how this can benefit to the city and therefore they ask us now we want to have a city cloud please help us to get it realized and they have a planning in different segments as education health mobility energy and things like that and the idea is now to bring this together all the data together on this cloud even in the context of the region the country and the european union as we have those regulations back practices from other cities and it's very much about coming from zero to synergy um, make the existing products projects visible and uh, use these synergies through this platform. Um, this is currently in a concept stage. As you can see, this is an um, idea of a, of a dashboard um, where we uh, collect all the data and present this to the citizens. Some examples show it's now it's in German because it's the German city. Uh, it's uh, about the weather, the bicycle and geo data being included and, and so on. So another example I want to show to you is a solution which we implemented in San Francisco. Uh, and you have in the in the the, the basis is the, the, the platform again, but there are now two different ways to access the data. On the one hand, you have a mobile phone application which will be used from the citizens. That's which you can see on the left. It's about information on the on the bus arrival at the bus stop. It's about c being connected uh, with the with the people living in the same street. Uh, it's information about events taking place. And on the other hand, you have this um, data being used for the security topic because this is a new city district being built um, 10 kilometers away from the city center and they have a security issue. There's a high cr criminal rate and they want to improve the safety in this um, area and therefore we helped there this community and the, the developer of the city district to increase or improve the, the, um, the security and you just can see it's about live streaming of video cameras, incident tracking, incident assignment and to include the security services. This now is the link between uh, the, the data flow on the one hand uh, for the residents um, with um, related to the needs for, for for the district in general, mobility topics included, and so on. And this is again another example where we follow this process, starting from the user needs, and then um, understand what what they need finally. And um, I'm very happy to to bring this um, experience which we have further within a discussion which we can. Um, f during this panel here later on, so you can visit me at the booth. Um, thank you for your attention.
Thank you very much. We will come back to you with the questions about the business model uh, in the discussion. With that, we hand over to Delphine from Orange. Sorry. You? So, hello, hello everybody. Uh, two words maybe on Orange first. Orange is a global telecom operator and IT services integrator. It's uh, an average of 264 million of uh, customers all over the world. And more specifically on the, on the smart cities, we are mainly partnering with the city themselves, with the city uh, services operator, like uh, transport, transportation, like uh, energy, and also with uh, real estate players. And with them, we, we deliver the, 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 the most uh, valuable project that can be at different sizes. It can be uh, a first project at a simple building size. It can be also at, a, at the level of a district that can be in France, for example, the Eco District or a new, uh, new urban area in, uh, in Middle East of Africa. We work, uh, of course, at the city size, and also we have a, a kind of a new initiative on the more uh, thematic destination, like uh, the, the ski resort, the, the mountains, for example, where we, we, we work with uh, Mont Genevre, uh, a smart mountain in, uh, in France. And more, more specifically, uh, still on the... Um, on the way we, we support and we help our customers, we have a strong focus on what we call the data journey, because data journey is really one of the key pillars of the smart cities, coming from the, um, the, the fact of collecting the data, to transport the data, to store the data, then to share, to process, to analyze, to check the quality, and also to open and publish the data and share the data that can be something done internally for the city, for the project owner, between the different entities. And of course, that's also uh, externally with all the ecosystem. And open data is really for us a, a fantastic way to, uh, to empower all, really all uh, the expertise of the cities. And that data, once we have uh, um, precisely managed their journey, what we have to do is to feed the different universities, universities of the smart city. And we see three main universities. The first one, which is, of course, the, the citizen one with all the citizen apps that we may deliver to the citizen to make its uh, everyday life more easy and, uh, and, and deliver all the practical services of the city. Another big universe for us is the one of the common center, of course, to, to manage properly all the urban services. And this is a, a universe dedicated to, uh, to the agents of the city. And the last universe will be the one of the open data. Uh, open data, again, to, to, to foster innovation, to help all the ecosystem of the city to, to, to develop uh, new services, new, new innovation. And one of the key pillars, it's true for open data, but it's true for each of the, uh, of the ecosystem is, and I think it's something that has been mentioned uh, just before also, is really the taking into account the human, the human inside. And for us, the human must be really the starting and the ending point of each of our initiatives together. And the governance as well is very important to get all the expertise from the city itself, of course, from um, the private, the public se sectors, and also the citizens and all the, the, the innovation that, can, that, that the city can bring. And um, maybe one, a few examples of uh, projects we may, we, we may lead. We have uh, many now uh, cities in France that use uh, one of our uh, urban um, services platform, which is, uh, we call it in French, uh, uh, Ma Ville dans ma poche. So it's uh, my city in my pocket. Welcome to my city. With uh, cities like, uh, like Nantes, for example, who, who did the first big work on open data that made also all that microservices delivered to the citizens uh, possible. Uh, Nantes, uh, we have uh, Perpignan, we have, uh, we have also some departments like uh, Lorne. And we work also, as I said, at, especially at a district level uh, in Middle East and in Africa.
Africa. In Middle East, for example, in partnership with MISA, we work on a global uh, new district, MDD, it's uh, Msherem Dondoa, which is a, a new district with a, a common center that will monitor and hypervise up to uh, more than 500,000 sensors within the city, within that district, which is an average 30 hectares district, within that district uh, for malls, for offices, for residents, for hotels. A, a, and make it um, as, uh, as efficient as possible in the maintenance, in the event management, in the security management. And this is really one uh, also good example of how we can uh, manage and improve the, 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 the district thanks again to, to, this, to the data. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm going to ask you to think about how this data that you publish is being used, and we might return to that in the, in the discussion later on. So with that, it's, uh, it's time to uh, go to the, well, another place in France, I, I suppose, uh, Metropole de Jean. And it's my pleasure to introduce the councillor for the Metropole, uh, uh, Denis. No, it's okay. See, it's okay. Well, um, uh, in the metropole of Dijon, we we have a new approach um, uh, to the connected management of public amenities on the urban uh, uh, functions. We think that smart city is first a human city. It's for citizen. It's not just technology. Technology is a support, um, uh, an important support, but just a support. And you, if you if you don't have a vision with your specific need, if you don't have a strategy, specific strategy, because you have a, a good analyze, um, I think uh, nothing can be done, really. Um, and the technology is the support of the vision. Um, and the open data is an opportunity. It's an opportunity uh, to give some services for citizens, for citizen, to, um, to ask citizens to contribute, to contribute um, to um, um, organize the ecosystem, the economic ecosystem, um, and, um, and to create a new way to give uh, public services. And uh, in Dijon Metropole, we, we create a, a connected center because we want to, co to coordinate, we want to centralize, um, and we want to exp exploit data. Um, we want to, to create this equipment uh, next year, at the end of next year. And um, we want to, to coordinate uh, security, municipal police, CCTV, traffic, municipal inquiries, snow, all the things you, you, uh, you can have in, in your life when you are a citizen. And um, it's the first time in France uh, that the centralized and control uh, um, con is connected will be used to manage urban with a global vision uh, urban infrastructures and um, we think that the scale of Dijon uh, metropole 24 uh, communities um, 260 uh, thousand people is a good size it's not an experiment, a uh, little experiment. We think it's a good size to, to realize this project. And data for us is really a, a shared resource at the heart of local authorities' new public services missions. We have to associate the best of uh, private innovation. It's very important. But we have to, to take the leadership, the public leadership, um, around this question of open data. For us, data uh, will all generate both collectively or individually. Um, a major, it's a major um, vi virtual resource now. Um, but uh, we, we have to think how to exploit this resource. Because we speak of uh, economic model, we speak of uh, a lot of, of uh, questions, and uh, we, we have to, to think about. Uh, and in this project, 
um, this question is, uh, is at the heart of the project because we think it's a way to give more services, more efficiency and savings to invest, not savings for savings, so no sense. Um, and for us, it's, it's really the heart of our um, vision. It's really important. Um, some services like uh, street lighting, traffic, water consumption. Uh, what about nature in the city? Uh, what about the bees in the city? Um, and this is the first time in France uh, that a local authority um, has embarked on the project of this scale um, on the principle of open data. That's for me the, the principal message that I want to, to share with you. Um, we, we, um, we are very uh, um, attentive uh, of the, um, the, the use of the data, of the property of the data, um, of, the, uh, of the way that we can uh, um, um, have a territory with attractiveness. It's for us very important. And uh, it's just, uh, for me, the, the message I want to, to say to you. Um, uh, we have a vision. Uh, we try to work with uh, uh, the largest uh, uh, enterprise and firms in France. And we want to, to create a new model to think uh, the, the future of smart city. And we try to realize it. We are not just speaking of it. It's uh, the end of next year. Thank you very much, Denise. Um, so um, we, we come back to the discussion later on. You, you, can, you articulated the vision. The how might be something we can discuss a little bit later. Um, so um, with that, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce um, again Michael from uh, Buig. If you want to, you can be standing up here. Or here. You, you, you. You're comfortable over there. OK, good. Uh, I'm close to my client, so it's fine. Um, we are going to be uh, the partner of Dijon uh, during these 12 year contracts with a great pleasure. Um, and we are kind of the, the integrator of smart solutions to make this kind of project possible. So Denis speaks about, speak about, spoke about the, the vision and um, we are kind of the how part of this project. Um, our job during those 12-year contract, 12-year project, will be first to to deploy the um, infrastructure, the sensors, the the, the devices. Uh, we are going to um, transform non-connected equipment to connected equipments. Um, for instance, uh, traffic lights, street lights, parking lots, uh, buildings, uh, electrical charging points will be connected. And you are going to deploy um, networks to connect all these equipment together. So we'll have a, a fully um, infrastructure to collect the data. This is the first step. The second step will be, thanks to uh, this connected infrastructure, to collect different kinds, different different kinds of data, different data sets. Uh, could be uh, real-time data, uh, traffic data events, requests sent by citizens, for instance, or, or tweets could be possible. Or it could be uh, static or inventory data. And all of those uh, data sets will be stored into a data lake. And uh, the third step of this project will be to publish, thanks to or according to uh, the, the, um, the public policy, uh, all those data in destinations to um, the local innovation ecosystem, startups, uh, engineering school, university, firms like ours, um, to the, um, the, municipality, the municipality itself to improve the communication between all the services inside um, the, the municipality and to improve the coordination uh, between those services. And the data could be um, published to the citizens as well, uh, having the idea of uh, transparency, of participative democracy, democracy that's the, a key point. And 
we are going to use an open data platform to publish all those data sets to uh, these local ecosystems. And the, the key point, uh, as Denny mentioned uh, uh, in this project, is to combine a vision and smart solution, smart infrastructure to go with this vision. And that's very interesting and that's unique in France and unique in Europe. So if you want to know a bit more about this vision, if you want to know a bit more about the solution that we are going to, to deploy, you can come to our booth. We have a, a dedicated booth about this project um, together with, our, with our, our, our partners and we can do real-time demonstration uh, using the platform, using the proof of concept platform that we have already developed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, we might return to that unique vision a little bit later on to see what, see what it is in a little bit more detail and uh, uncover, uncover the box a bit. Uh, but with that, I'll give the uh, floor to Carmen. Thank you very much, Carl. Um, so uh, I am the CEO of Citelum. Citelum is a, a service provider uh, for cities. We come from light, but uh, we are working also in all uh, urban infrastructure, connected or not connected infrastructure all around the world. And we are operating in more or less uh, 1,000 cities, small cities, big cities, medium cities. And I should like to share some insight on uh, urban platform is what uh, Carl asked uh, to us previously. And um, uh, those insight are in two sides. Um, one of them is governance, data governance governance and the other one is the uh, business model creating value very important uh, we have been working on data platform from a long time ago because we started to perform our own business and it's our clients who ask us to go further and uh, what we learn on that on data governance data governance is a key issue um, as you know today, cities are providing a lot of that data, generating data in a lot of different ways. Um, and uh, the question is, uh, this data uh, should be owned by those who provide the data. And in most time, it's the city who is providing the data because uh, they are operating public services and they are generating activity with citizens. Very important. So the city should ask uh, all the providers they have uh, to give the data to them uh, and to have open protocols. We have uh, still some uh, um, a key point in the some equipments in the city that are not providing open data to them. So very important for governance. And the, the, the city should uh, ask providers to work with this data in the way they wish to do it. The second one is creating value. Very important. Uh, putting captors everywhere and putting it in a platform is not very difficult. You can find a lot of people who know how to do it. It's just technology. The question is what for? And how do you pay for it? And this is very important. And it's come from a, politi a political vision. We are very happy to work in Dijon Consortium. And we are very happy to have a client that has this political vision. That, and this political vision starts on how to create value for the citizen and how to pay for the platform. And there are several ways to do it. The first one is to best operate the city. That needs, of, of course, having the access to all the data. For example, if you are operating traffic lights, light and you have a traffic light provider that is not giving the data to the city, you are not going to be able to connect this to the rest of equipment. So every city who is asking for, who is asking for traffic light providers, please ask open system if you want to be able to interact with them. So uh, the best thing is how you can work uh, with uh, uh, city services to lower cost. In Dijon, the, ch the choice that the city uh, made that is a very interesting and intelligent choice is to work uh, first of, of all on light, 
light uh, economies, uh, savings, and is something that is going to pay uh, for the platform and for the control center and put everybody together in a control center to uh, improve uh, the way people are working together and to lower cost. And this is going to pay for the platform. First side, to operate the city. Second side, very innovative and interesting one. One, how this data is going to generate uh, additional revenues, direct additional revenues, and indirect additional revenues. And is uh, what the open data platform is about. Uh, in Dijon, we are going to work with an ecosystem of uh, economic actors around the platform that are going to develop new services, are going to develop the local economy. For example, uh, putting this open data under Dijon governance is going to allow uh, to develop uh, new businesses around transportation, food trucks, uh, where people are not uh, getting access access to restaurant on uh, the middle of the day and so on. So uh, uh, Dijon has thought from the beginning on that. Data governance, how to create value. If you want to develop a sustainable pl platform, is it was about. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Very interesting presentation. And the, we will come back to you for some more input, I think, on business model in the discussions as well. Um, I could, ju could just mention that if you're interested, uh, TM Forum, the non-for-profit uh, global industry association I, I represent, we just uh, launched a city as a platform manifesto, uh, signed this week by Barcelona, Dubai, and uh, roughly 90 other cities in the last eight weeks. If you're interested in that, take a look, because the aim and ambition of that manifesto is to establish and enshrine the principles behind driving local data economies, exactly what you were talking about there. So with that, I'll, I'll give the floor to Wolfgang. OK, thanks. OK, um, so you are, these, these discussions are framed by two presentations <laughs> from German people. Um, and uh, there are many things already mentioned. These are very important, as uh, Carmen says, about this governance um, stuff and all the, yeah, the impact and the, the support from the uh, city leadership. That's very important. I will come to that later. Uh, I want to show you um, a con detailed example or give you an overview on an example uh, we are doing in uh, Munich together with Lyon and, um, and Vienna and some other cities. It's a uh, Horizon 2020 project and it's called uh, Smarter Together. And, and there you see the partners um, beside these so-called uh, lighthouse cities. We have uh, follower cities like uh, Venice, um, Santiago de Compostela and uh, Sofia. And uh, we try to have detailed implementation of uh, smart cities um, with various areas um, and in Munich um, um, as I'm representing uh, here the ICT cluster so my part is the ICT stuff uh, this is the area in the western part uh, of Munich it's a huge area where we built uh, flats at the moment for uh, 25,000 people and it's the biggest building area at the moment in, uh, in Munich. And in this project we have various uh, areas, um, mobility, technology and energy, and the involvement of the people and the inhabitants and citizens as well. So all these areas uh, are dealing with data, but it's interesting to have all these data connected together. And that's why um, I show on the example of an integrated infrastructure we built in this project and designed in this project how we are using the smart data platform here and uh, derive some smart services uh, from this platform. So that's an overview. And um, okay, I'm uh, I'm coming from the informatics, from the computer science, and on the left side uh, here you see yeah, the beam. This one, uh, that's uh, one and a uh, two and a half meter of a lamppost. 
Um, the lampposts in Munich, we have uh, 85,000 lampposts. It's a um, uh, city-owned infrastructure, but these lampposts are uh, only uh, having lamp and putting light on the streets, but we designed a new version of this lamppost uh, and uh, make it intelligent. Uh, so we uh, sh um, have some space where we can put um, communication infrastructure in and infrastructure for putting sensor systems on this lamppost. Then uh, all these data, beside the others from the energy sector or the um, um, mobility sector, all this comes into a, we call it a smart uh, data platform. It's different to the big data platform, as uh, we already mentioned here on the board, um, that it's important to have the solution uh, in the first step and not just collecting all the data. Uh, it's, um, it's important to collect the right data. And there we have um, data from the sensor systems, but uh, from the citizens as well, uh, from counting stations uh, for the traffic. And then it's very important for a city to, yeah, to keep an eye on all this data collected. Um, open data, it's very nice. I'm responsible for open government as well in Munich, and we are collecting and providing open data. But in the end, you have to finance your solutions, and that's why you have to think about business models as well. That's why we have to build something. Some call it a data lake or yeah, some, some cloud, some combination possibility of the data. And um, what we have here, it's a Datenwächter in German. It's a data gatekeeper concept. We want to provide other cities uh, to give them not a start from the scratch when they invest in this uh, area, but uh, start from a higher level and have some advices on uh, legal stuff and business models and all, how to handle all this data. And then in the end, uh, you need to put this somewhere uh, available for the people. And then we have uh, mobile applications where we derive uh, solutions and offer them on a city app level. Uh, this one, I have a little bit to hurry. And there um, you have these lampposts, and then you can see your local climate. Um, and that's a pilot project, OK? Uh, but we can roll out it on the uh, whole city, and might be it's interesting to improve prediction and all this stuff already mentioned here. These are the areas we built these lampposts. And from my uh, point, there some things to, to mention. Um, it's very important to talk to the people, yeah? to, to uh, describe the technique, the terms, uh, to have workshops with the people, because they are a data provider as well. And they have to uh, work, you have to work together with the uh, citizens. And then talk to internal people. I know how hard it is to get open data from the administration. I'm in the administration, but it's really hard work to get them giving it to us and then offering uh, this data to the people outside. And then talk to the partners. We have a number of partners you see on the uh, bottom. And um, yeah, keep, keep people involved and motivate them, uh, involve them again and uh, overcome organizational uh, boundaries that these silos everyone is talking about uh, and the city has to invest and yeah it's good to have some sponsor on the highest level of the city um, somehow we found in munich and in the other cities as well but it's very important to have this support thanks thank you very much thank you So, so with that, we are entering the Q&A session of uh, this discussion. So I urge you, everybody who might have a question to start thinking about that. And we might even get an iPad with some questions later on. Who knows? <coughs> I think we will. So um, just as a comment, I mentioned that before. I think we are right now at the point where we have um, come to the maturity, where we have succeeded in providing transparency into city services. So all these open data initiatives around the world they do provide insights into what is going on in the city, if you have the energy and insights and knowledge uh, and interest to actually dig it up from, from uh, the various data sets that are available. What we haven't done yet is to make use of this data in meaningful 
in a meaningful enough way. So my first question is really about that business, and we identified some of the barriers to this as well. So some of the barriers to actually achieving this include lack of business models. So poorly articulated business models on how this data can be used. Lack of uh, uh, programmatic uh, uh, business use cases. So that means a difficult way to actually implement this in practice, not just talk about them, but actually programmatically implement these things. And finally, uh, sort of a lacking social element. Not all cities have been staffed correctly to be able to build a digital ecosystem. They've been able to build a technical platform, but not the entire ecosystem that can actually make use of this data. So my, my first question, I suppose, must go to you, being the driver of the vision here uh, in this panel. Um, how do you see this? Um, uh, how do you want to overcome these, uh, the challenges that we have today when it comes to uh, making this actually work, going from transparency and going into make, making use of this data from these open platforms? Uh, Denise. Well, I think um, we have to, to create the, the governance of those, um, of those data. We have to associate a lot of people of this governance. We have to have some experts to, to, to have the, the good way to drive, uh, to drive the, the, the governance of the data. And we, we create a new, we innovate, we create a new way to think the city. I cannot answer now uh, what we, we are trying to, to create. But with our vision, we think that we, we have to, um, to give to people transparency. It's very important because um, if, if you give uh, transparency, you can, um, you can um, uh, have a, a good democracy. It's very important for people. And also, people want um, um, good services. They have many ideas that we don't know because uh, we have to listen. So, so Denis, my, yeah. my, my question is, we have seen uh, several hundred open data initiatives yes. around the world. So transparency is there. It's a check in that box. What we don't have yet is um, our good examples. There are some, some niche examples of, of success, but we don't have a consistent good example of cities that actually use open data as part of, of an ecosystem approach uh, in, in what, what we think is, what I think would be a, um, you know, a fruitful way. Uh, have you any thoughts on how you can get there in, in Dijon? Yes, uh, it's, it's the way we, we try to, um, uh, to, to manage the data. It's, it's, it's very, but you, you say you, we have no example. Uh, we try to, to, to build this example. And, uh, and it's just uh, innovation, it's just creation. And um, um, we, we have to create this, um, this project. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's um, during uh, a year. We have a year to create this project. And uh, next year, we, we come here and we, we say to you what we, what we create. Ah, I yes. detect a promise. Yes, Sh yes. Sh Should we walk over to Carmen? I, think, I thought you had some interesting um, insights into business yes, model yes. aspects. I have insight on business model because we have been operating in many cities around the, the world since a long, long time. And we have uh, our Muse platform that is going to be implemented uh, in uh, Dijon. And from the beginning, the platform is paid is paid on the project. Something that is clear, uh, Dijon has no doubt that uh, they are going to earn money, to save money with their project. Because first of all, you, have to, to, you need to have a sustainable business model. I'm going to take not just about Dijon, because you said, oh, you have just Dijon. I'm going to talk to you about Copenhagen, fully implemented platform Muse. Uh, why we we implemented this platform. At the beginning, the city said, yes, I want a project and I'm going to pay for it with energy saving. We are committed to be carbon neutral and we want to do energy saving. It's money and it's also our 
energy engagement for the city. So we want transparency, but not just because transparency is fine, because we want to control that we are going to get the saving. So when we implemented the platform for uh, Copenhagen, it was because as they wanted a lot of transparencies, we had two ways to do that. Pay for a lot of people controlling what we're doing on the field, or put the platform and give them the opportunity to have real-time information on how we are performing the contract. It's cheaper, so it's paid. We put the platform in. And, it, and, uh, and if I understand you, Carmen, that means that the city took, uh, uh, were sort of uh, responsible for getting the savings by using the data coming out yes, of the open yes, for the platform. and they control that. Uh, and I give you this example just because it paid the platform. In Dijon, same thing. The platform is paid. It's paid, I explained to the, just previously, the business model. First thing is to improve the way we are performing services in the city. Uh, city services, private company services, and it's not just about data, but also process. If you don't have the process, the data won't do nothing alone. So we have processes that improve the way people are working together and saving money. And this is paid with that. And after, the open data is just um, a gift, something more. And we have ideas on how we are going to get even more value for the city. A direct value and indirect value. And direct value is even much more important because it's social value. Imagine, imagine Dijon, very beautiful city, gastronomic city. You should go and see what they are doing about. We are waiting for an invitation. Yes, yeah, of agree. course. And uh, imagine that when we choose to do uh, this open data, uh, they are going to choose what they put on a, in open data, not everything. Maybe they are going to put traffic, uh, people, and formation on the city. And let, let, let's, park, let's, park, let's park that discussion there, Carmen. We'll come back to you uh, if time permits. You don't want to know how they are going to get money and if, the right you, if, you can, if, you can be close, if you can be short about it, okay. yes. Yeah. And uh, they say, guys, find solution. And uh, you have food truck that are going to come and do very qualitative <laughs> food truck in Dijon. New mm -hmm. business, new taxes for Dijon and direct value. So a gastronomic use case. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's Which brilliant. We are a gastronomic city. <laughs> you see. Of course. Uh, so I also promised, uh, I also promised Michael to uh, articulate that unique vision that you talked about. So you have a, a chance of actually telling us what's unique about the vision. What's unique about the vision is that um, um, Dijon has the, the, the courage, the, you, you, you are very courageous to launch this, this unique project. And it is the articulation between this courageous vision and solution that is very unique. We, there are several um, projects or proof of concept or demonstrators everywhere in the world. But here, it is a structure, a st centralized vision together with solutions. That's, that's, to my mind, the key point, the key point, the success point that, um, that you have uh, put away and, and the solutions are just tools uh, to serve this vision. Indeed. So um, uh, to make sure, I also want to come back to Delphine. Um, we talked about, um, we talked about uh, the data that you collect in, in these orange platforms, but how do you envisage that this data will be used once it has been published. So how do you go from just publishing, making it available, to getting it in use? Yeah, uh, one example I, I've started to mention, it is uh, one city in France, uh, Nantes, and Nantes, first job, the first job they've done is really to, to classify their data, to, to, to make sure they were secured, fresh, clean data, and they have, they have done a, a strong job on open data first. And then on top of that, we have built a, a citizen app with uh, tens of uh, micro practical services for the citizens. And thanks to that uh, very clean, French, fresh and, uh, and rich data, we've been, we have today uh, more than uh, or clo nearly uh, 100,000 loads uh, download of that application. That is, uh, I think, a, a good demonstration uh, of the fact that if you have, of course, the right application but the right data uh, to feed that application, then 
you meet the success and, and, and the citizens really are empowered thanks to that, uh, that that application. So that's a good example, I think, of uh, I think it's a great example. what to do with the data. It's a great example. Um, I want to return a little bit, uh, Wolfgang, to the, some of the some of the barriers. Um, by the way, we have one question to you, which is more saying that you had nice examples in your presentation. So apparently the audience uh, likes, liked your presentation here. Um, but apart from that, um, what is it, what are the barriers here that we need as a developer of solutions, like uh, I suppose Carmen is, like, like you are, Delphine, what's the barrier to uh, adoption of the data that we can produce? What, what is it that is missing? What's the secret sauce that we still need to add for this to be a gastronomic highlight, uh, as we just talked about in Dijon? Oh, well, um, let's start with example from, from Ludwigsburg, which we, which we have here. And, the, and I see some parallelity to, to the other topics being mentioned already. Um, it's sure, on the one hand, you have the value. And the, the, the well, we have the data, and the data might have not the value. And you have to link this with the pain points and with the need. Uh, and for this, you have to start with analysis uh, and be sure who are the ones using this. And uh, application and services we're thinking of for Ludwigsburg, or think Ludwigsburg is thinking of this. They also um, are a city for the tourists. Um, they want to attract them, be attractive for them. What does it mean now for the tourists to come? Um, and what support? What, what is supporting now? Um, how could the city support this? On the one hand, there are a topic like parking. They, the, the tourists are coming. Are coming with a car. They have to find a car, the the the, the, the parking lot, and um, so finally, it's important to make it transparent or make more transparency where's a free parking spot. Now, this improves then the attractiveness of the city. Uh, another topic we're addressing is. Um, the shops, on the one hand, they want to, to ha we have the digitalization, um, Amazon or others um, offering their products via the internet. And uh, th this is something where the city wants to support the local economy, uh, even that the, the shops being involved within this platform, um, offering specials, want to attract even the tourists because the app should be used by the tourists as well. And there are a, a lot of uh, topics uh, then w which can be addressed, but it starts from the pain points and the specific situation in the, in the, in the city. Thank you very much. Um, any other questions from the audience? Anybody's got a burning desire to know anything from uh, one of the panelists? I think it might work. So we've been through a, a discussion today where we basically conclude that open data is uh, something we pretty much want to do by default. Uh, we really need a reason why we shouldn't publish it as an open data source if we can do it. I think we also came to the conclusion that we do provide transparency today, but we still have ways to go when it comes to making use of data. There are some good examples of this. You tend to see these examples in select use cases as uh, certain apps parking solutions, uh, and so on. And it's a really a, a rather short list of, of cataloged use cases for this. Uh, but we all know that there is much more around the corner uh, that we don't know about just yet. City service, I think you made a, an excellent point, Carmen, about how you finance these type of, of, of initiatives. And I think doing it correctly will, will actually not put a, a load on the city, it will actually alleviate load from the city when going about doing these things. And then comes the question, what's missing? And uh, well, do take a look at uh, uh, some of the things we have done in this space as well, because we, we did identify a number of things that we think that platform providers such as yourself will have plugged already or intend to, to, to address uh, in order to actually find, uh, um, in order to make data that we produce being used by uh, the local businesses in cities that's driving a local data economy and a local knowledge economy. So with that, I want to thank, I want to thank uh, this esteemed list of panelists for not only being in time, but also contributing very greatly to this discussion.